Uh, you know, first of all, kind of recap our week. We've had a you know, really good week. I thought the bye came at a good time for us. We were able to get some guys some rest that had played a lot of minutes. You know, we were able to, uh, you know, obviously we played on Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. Um, you know, Tuesday we were completely off uh, per NCAA rules. Monday we lifted and just showed film, didn't have them dress out. So they had two days back to back there where they were able to get, I think, physically and mentally refreshed. I thought that was uh, not any more in, uh, indicative than, than the way they came out on Wednesday for practice. They had a ton of energy, um, were very vocal. Uh, so I thought that was good. Uh, we practiced well uh, the last two days. Guys have had a great uh, way about them. Um, they seem really locked in. So I, I think the, the, the buy, you know, sometimes you wonder how buy affect two days off, you know, practice coming back off two days off, what that's going to look like. But our guys handled that in a very mature way. Um, I think we've gotten better in some areas the last uh, couple of days for sure. Um, obviously, we have practice here this afternoon is our final day of prep for tomorrow. But we've clearly made, you know, really the, the week more about us than we have about uh, any opponent. Certainly, we have great respect for Iowa. Uh, Iowa's a good basketball team. They're a veteran basketball team. They're 10 deep. Um, the, uh, they, they don't play any freshmen at all. They're older. Um, you know, they had the kid Utah sitting out that got added to those guys that came back that played for him the last two years. You know, I thought late in the year last year, I, I told Fran that, you know, we played a lot of um, really good teams uh, late in the year, as you always do in our league, and then the Big Ten tournament, the NCAA tournament. I thought when we played them in Iowa City, they were on par with a lot of those teams. Uh, you could just tell they were continuing to get better, and I think they're experiencing the fruits of that labor, that, that stick to itiveness, if you will, with, the, with their team. And those guys have gotten older, they're stronger, they're very physical, they're great on the backboard, they execute well. Um, they do a good job of changing defenses. So they're, they're, you can tell they've played together for a while, uh, and they're a really good team. So it's going to be a great challenge uh, for sure. Uh, but again, this week, uh, certainly in the position that we're in, has been much more about us um, in, in conjunction with you know, preparing for obviously a really good Iowa team, but you know, it's been more about, about us. So we've had a good week. We want to make sure we finish up strong today. Uh, and, and are ready to compete tomorrow at 6.30. Questions? What can you deduce by, by given what's happened in the Big Ten this week, uh, how the conference sizes up as it nears the midway point? Um, honestly, I can basically say to you it's, it's exactly what I said when I was standing up here before any team played a game. People, I, I kept saying I thought top to bottom that it was as good or better than last year, top to bottom. And I think the true depth of a league and how good a conference is, is judged by 1 through 12. And I think right now in our league, on any given night, any place, anywhere, uh, if you don't come to play, you don't execute, any of these teams can win. Anybody can win on any night. Um, I think that I, th I thought coming into the year, when I looked at the teams that finished in the bottom third to half last year, I felt like and said before any of the games were played that they were considerably better. And I saw that. I saw it coming with guys sitting out and becoming eligible and recruiting and guys starting to have more continuity and stability uh, at some places. And I think you're seeing, the, seeing that really play itself out. As you scout Iowa, are they as deep of a team as you've seen? And what are the challenges of going up against a team? Yeah, I think they are. You know, uh, I don't know how I'd have to look. I don't want to say we haven't played any team that plays 10 guys basically double-digit minutes every game. Um, one doesn't come to mind, and we may have. Uh, DB's, <coughs> usually, DB's usually the guy, and I haven't asked him that question. He usually can rattle stuff off. He's like an encyclopedia. Um, but, yeah, no, no question. I think that's, that's one of the strengths of their team is they truly do, but do it by committee. As I alluded to earlier, they are a good team. They've obviously got good individual talent as well. I have a lot of respect for Marble as a senior. I think he's one of our league's better players. Um, and they've got other guys as well that are really, really talented. But I, I just, as I watch them, I think they play the game the right way. You can tell they're older, they're mature, they're experienced. Uh, they have great timing and, and, and anticipate well and things that they're doing that I think sometimes when you see that, you say the only way that's acquired is by is time. Playing with one another every day, being in the same system, getting a year or two or three, in some cases with their guys, experience, 
And, um, you know, obviously Fran's done a great job of, of uh, building it from the time he was there until now. After the Indiana game, you, you talked a lot about the offensive woes. And you, what can a week like this do? What, what can you do with the guys to, to kind of alleviate some of that? Well, we've done a lot of different things. I won't get into the details of it, but, you know, we, we're fully aware that our offense needs to get better. Um, you know, we've worked that this week hard and, you know, we'll, we'll you know, we're all, we talk about being solutions based all the time, uh, Marcus. And I think that, uh, you know, I think we've seen some strides there this week for sure. Tracy Abrams having the back issues. Is he doing better now? Uh, he's doing better. You know, he's had them really all year. I and mean, Tracy's a tough kid. Um, you know, we've been fortunate enough that none of the, you know, frequency of the back spasms had really come to light on a game night until Sunday. You know, but he's had them. He, he fights through it. And, you know, he's, he's, um, you know, he's a winner. I mean, we all know that. I mean, he has, he has intangibles that make him a lot of fun to coach. So, you know, if Tracy can play, he'll play. He's a pretty tough kid. Got, you, know, you talk about his toughness a lot and you're all your guys, but I don't want to overstate it, but is, is he kind of on a different level than most guys that maybe you've coached? Um, maybe now, Marcus. I don't think he was a year ago. I don't. Um, I'm certainly, you know, I'm really proud of the development that he's made from a leadership perspective, from being more vocal, um, the way he interacts with his teammates, the way he talks to those guys in practice. Uh, the fact that he's more of an everyday guy now maybe than he was a year ago. He understands the value of that. I think he appreciates that more, embraces that more. Um, and in a lot of areas, you know, whether it's academics, whether it's personal choices, whether it's how he practices, you know, he exemplifies a lot of, you know, what we want to be about culturally. Is there any more mental massaging after the stretch you've been through? Is it just business as usual? No, I think the one thing it did, Jeremy, you know, when you're playing a game, two days game, three days game, two days game, um, you know, I, I think you get in that mode where, and you have to, where it's the next one. You know, you got to get to the next one. You got to prepare. Every team in our league is certainly worthy of that. I mean, we got good teams in our league, good coaches. Uh, but this week, I think the thing that's made a little bit different because we've had a little bit more time, we've been able to refresh our bodies a little bit physically and mentally and really examine and spend more time on us while also preparing for a really good Iowa team. You know, so that, that the bye week, as I mentioned at the, at the outset, I think came at a good time for us. When the team is kind of struggling, sometimes you'll see guys, I guess, kind of press to try to make the play to, mm -hmm. to get you out. Do you, you no. have to, no, I just told them, um, you know, this past week that, you know, I, I think, and those guys have really grabbed onto it, you know, when, when adversity hits, you have to grind harder. You got to grind. You know, you, you don't fly away. You fight your way through things, and that's what we're doing. That's what the staff's doing. That's what the players are doing. That's, that's how we approach practice, solutions, get better. Uh, attitude and effort have been good. Um, you know, so that's – that that's kind of what we're doing you know we don't we don't you know back down from 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 that you know we like we like to face it head on before the indiana game you're talking about you want ray to be more aggressive and he had a good game scoring wise after you watched the film was it a, was it aggressive as you want him to be um yeah i thought he was more aggressive marcus certainly than he was um in the ohio state game i thought he imposed as well a little bit more um we 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 need to uh we we you know, he, he's got to give us more. It's just kind of who we are uh, in this particular year. You know, we ask him to do an awful lot, and he's playing a lot of minutes for us. Uh, we ask him to do an awful lot on the offensive end. A lot of nights he's guarding the other team's best offensive perimeter player, certainly for portions of the game, for sure. Sometimes even more than portions of the game. We need him to rebound. You know, he's, you know, we got a lot on his show, and he can handle it. He's a really good player. But we need some other guys to step up to alleviate some of that uh, pressure, you know, off of him in a more consistent fashion. We've had guys step up, but you know, the one thing about us is is we have to have everybody hitting on all cylinders. You know, as our freshmen have come along, I think it's important that you know we're playing basically four or five veterans. You know, we need to bat about 80 percent there to be good. You know, it can't be that yeah, two guys played well tonight and three didn't. You know, that ratio is not going to work in this league. You know, not not right now where we are. Now, I do think that we had some bright spots with some of the young guys. I thought that Tate was terrific in the first half on Sunday. The second half, I thought he learned some hard lessons. You know, 
maybe not to try to shoot over a seven footer or you know, some, he learned some lessons, and he, he, he's the best now. I mean, he'll come in. I just saw him now. I come in, what are you doing? Well, I'm watching more film. I want to see my clips. I want to see the turnovers. I want to alleviate the – I mean, he's, he's a great. I mean, he wants to work, and, you know, he's learning, and, and it bothers him just as much as it bothers anybody if he turns, which is great. That's what you want, you know. Um, you know, Morgan played not a ton of minutes, but in the minutes he did, I thought he just made a couple mistakes, too many per minute played there. You know, he's got a – and he knows that. Um, so he came in, he watched it, he's working on that. So we, those guys are working and evolving, they are. Um, but in the meantime, while that's happening, then we need consistency out of our veterans. It's a more overall question, but it's interesting with uh, the three big programs here. It seems like year two is the real rebuilding, retooling year. Have you been through that? And what are kind of the challenges, uh, I guess, of keeping the momentum through all that? Yeah, well, I mean, you're obviously trying to get the most out of every team you coach. And, you know, it is what it is. You know, we're not going to – I'm fully aware of the fact that we got nine new players out of 14. I mean, I know that. I mean, well, we were not using that as an excuse. You know, uh, I realize that Jalen Tate's a freshman, but did he jump to the ball or did he not jump to the ball? It's February. It's nothing personal. I love him. Jump to the ball. You know, we, we don't have any excuses. Um, you know, I, I do think we've had – you know, obviously you have some turnover heading into year two. The same thing was uh, that way when I was at, when I was at Ohio. I, if you said to me, Jeremy, and I really hadn't thought about it, is that pretty typical of a second year transitioning out of year one? I'd say it probably is. I'd say probably more often than not. But, you know, we, 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 we have enough uh, things that we can control right now that we can do better that can certainly make us more competitive and put us in a better position. And those are the things we're trying to control right now. How about any questions from the phone lines for Coach Gross? Um, it's, it's Steve. I'm sorry to ask you to do this, but I had a little trouble hearing you as you described the status of Tracy. Can you just yeah. go over that? Yeah, uh, he's looked great in practice the last two days, but he's had he's been fighting spasms uh, quite frequently throughout the year. Unfortunately for us on Sunday, it was just the first time during a game day that they maybe you know acted up a little bit more frequently. Um, the last two days, he's been getting treatment every day, as he's done all year. Um, you know, obviously, Tracy's a kid who it's not like he doesn't want to play. He wants to play. He's competitive. Um, you know, he's been good the last two days. We'll cross our fingers that he looks good again today and looks good again tomorrow. Thank you. Sure. It has been perfect, but the last two games, just uh, his confidence built up. Uh, yeah, Nana's playing better offensively. Um, but, you know, you're talking about – what do you have? La Where's Derek? What do you have last game? Eight points, ten points. That in the la you know, right around ten. You know, on on uh, low number of shot attempts. So he's been very efficient, which is great. And I'm glad to see a few more go in for him. But his strength is he's a monster on defense. He was ridiculous defensively on Sunday. He graded out. I mean, I don't know what the nose sick. I mean, he's so good on defense. The thing I we need him to do is rebound the ball, uh, and he's done that really well in the last two games. I'm more focused on that. You know, whether he goes – I mean, I, I don't want to say I don't care. Of course, I want them all to go in. But, you know, four for six, two for six, five for eight, you know, three for seven, whatever it is, he usually takes pretty good ones. At the end of the day, he does that on relatively limited attempts. He he's not a guy shooting 15, 20 times a game. You know, is, is, is that the solution to, man, that will make you play so much better? Eh, I, a little bit. But he's got to be really good defensively, and we need him to rebound the ball, and he's done that much better uh, per minute played in the last two games. I think that's been really encouraging. Any other questions on the phone line other than Steve's? Not here. <laughs> All right. Okay, thanks, guys.